In today's world, we usually consider elephants to be the giants of the land. They are, after all, the largest living terrestrial animals on Earth, with fully grown adults being impervious to attacks by wild predators. On the other hand, while large birds do exist, like the ostrich, we still tend to think of them as being rather small, opposite to the titanic elephants, so to speak. And for hundreds, and even perhaps thousands of years, this has been the way of thinking. Elephants equal big, and birds equal not so big. However, in reality, this wasn't always the case. In fact, once upon a time, off the coast of what is today Italy, birds outgrew elephants. This bizarre situation began with a genus of elephant known as Paleoloxodon. It included two of the largest elephant species to ever exist. The first one being Paleoloxodon nematicus, which was the largest elephant species ever, which could be as heavy as eight Toyota Corollas. And then on top of that, it also was home to the second largest elephant species as well, Paleoloxodon antiquus. This giant, commonly referred to as a straight tusked elephant, populated large swaths of Europe during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. During this time, they were the largest terrestrial animals around Europe, but not all of their descendants would be destined for such greatness. As roughly 500,000 years ago, a colony of these elephants ended up on Sicily and Malta, via a series of islands and land bridges that appeared during lower water levels. However, eventually the water levels rose again, and these elephants soon found themselves marooned. These titans, stranded with limited resources and no direct threats, soon experienced something called insular dwarfism and trunk over time, eventually leading to the emergence of the smallest elephant to ever live, Paleoloxodon falconeri. As the smallest of all elephants, the falconeri was substantially smaller than its giant predecessor, with males standing at 3 feet, or 1 meter at the shoulder, while females reaching just 2 feet and 8 inches, or 0.8 meters. At this height, both genders were exceptionally lighter than even the smallest elephant species of today, the Borneo pygmy elephant. Paleontologists estimate that the males would have measured about 250 kilograms or 550 pounds in weight, making them around the same weight as a medium-sized domestic pig. Meanwhile, the females were only 150 kilograms or 330 pounds, making them lighter than modern-day baby elephants. Such a dramatic decrease in body size would surely have made this species quite the sight. But they were not the only ones that underwent extreme changes on the two islands for they were joined by a host of other animals that were also impacted by island life. But the difference is that not all of these animals became smaller, as due to the lack of predators on the island, some animals that were usually restricted in size due to predation were now able to freely grow to their heart's content, resulting in numerous cases of island gigantism. This included giant owls, cranes, tortoises, and not to mention the largest dormouse paleontologists know of. But all these paled in comparison to the swan that called these two islands home, Cygnus falconeri. The Cygnus falconeri is actually the largest swan to ever exist, and was an imposing 7 feet or 2.1 meters long when extending its body, and its wingspan was even more impressive, coming in at 3 meters or 9.8 feet, making them about one third bigger than the largest living swan, the mute swan. However, due to its hollow bones, this giant swan was lighter than the dwarf elephant, but it outsized in the height and length department. This contrast is kind of similar to what happened on the well-known Haydig Island, where a species of pterosaur was able to outgrow many of the dinosaurs on the island and even preying on a few of them. However, in Sicily and Malta, the relationship between Cygnus falconeri and Paleoloxodon falconeri wasn't as cutthroat, as both were mainly herbivorous, with the only exception being that the giant swan may have occasionally ate small aquatic animals as seen in their modern day relatives. Yet, that doesn't mean there was no potential rivalry as they both filled similar niches. That being said though, with the height advantage the swan possessed, it was able to reach higher levels of vegetation than the elephant could, which once again likely diminished the amount of conflict between these two odd creatures. Despite this, the odd battle or two was still probably unavoidable as both animals would have crossed paths many, many times, which is exacerbated by the notion that the Cygnus falconeri may have actually been flightless due to its large size. Furthermore, its feet were better equipped for walking than swimming, and they may have had less webbing than modern day swans, implying that it might have spent most of its time on land, leading to an increased amount of potential contact between these two species. Similar to the swan, the Paleoloxodon falconeri also underwent certain changes that affected the way it moved around, as its limbs were proportionally quite slender and its back was concave, making it much more nimble than today's elephants. 
It also walked more on its toes, granting it the ability to better navigate the steep terrains commonly found in Sicily, and retain its balance when walking on uneven surfaces. Additional changes to this elephant included the development of a thicker coat and tiny ears, both of which evolved for thermodynamic reasons and once again adding to its array of features that went against what we tend to think of when we imagine elephants. It, along with the giant swan, truly made one odd yet fascinating duo. Which begs the question, what happened to them? The answer is, unfortunately for both animals, an island without predators can only remain predatorless for a limited amount of time. And approximately 200,000 years ago, fluctuations in water levels once again allowed a new influx of animals to reach Sicily and Malta from mainland Italy. Unfortunately, some of these new arrivals were terrible news for the elephant and the swan, as they included not only lions, but cave hyenas and wolves. On top of that, larger and more formidable herbivores also arrived in the form of red deer, fallow deer, steppe bison, oryx, and even a hippo. Furthermore, another batch of Paleoloxodon reached the islands and would call it home. This influx of new animals, especially the predators, would have created a dire situation for both the swan and tiny elephant, likely contributing to their ultimate demise. To add fuel to the fire, it's also believed that this region was experiencing an increase in tectonic activity during this time which may have put more restraints on the environment and in turn resources, exacerbating the demise of Cygnus falconeri and Paleoloxodon falconeri. However, even though they may have disappeared, Sicily and Malta would still retain a surreal ecosystem for quite some time, as the newcomers underwent their own interesting transformations with some strange new sites including a dwarf hippo and coincidentally another small elephant, Paleoloxodon nidriensis. Yet, their stories are for another time. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please consider giving a like, comment, or subscribe. Or if you're feeling generous, feel free to do all three. But I'll see you all next time for the next episode of Extinct Zoo.